Hey, it's Al Angelo from A-Plus Racing, and I'm bringing you another Q&A Monday where I answer your Miata questions the best that I can. So in case you're not sure what that is, is you got a question on how to repair your Miata, uh, something that you need that has to do with a Miata, then by all means, just enter it in any uh, comment on any of my videos. I see every one of them. I read every one of them. And then I'll try to address it in this form right here on Q&A Monday. So here's the ones I got for the last couple weeks. So let's just jump right in, okay? So it looks like Chris Carter, 1926, he writes to me and he says, I really enjoy your content. My brother and I are building our own budget spec Miata in North Texas, and your videos inspired us to make it happen um, and are excellent resources for the build. You mentioned a video a while ago about how you can hang window glass to close off the cabin when off the track. Uh, would like to see you make a video on that someday. And let's read more. And we will see you at the racetrack. That's funny. All right. So, um, yeah, I do do that. I have a couple different ways of uh, getting the original glass to sit in the door um, after I've got the roll bars in and all that. Um, so, yeah, you're right. I should make a video on that. So uh, watch for that coming up, and I'll, uh, I'll do that. It's pretty simple. i got a couple ways of doing it. All right. Hey, thanks for that comment. And, yeah, I'll see you at the racetrack, buddy. All right. Speaking of hydraulic presses, would the cheaper 12-ton hydraulic press – oh, the stupid computer. You know, if I had a good IT guy – so I think what I, what I remember seeing in this question, I'll try to get down to it, is that um, he wants to know if the Harbor Freight 12-ton press uh, is, a, is a good one to do the job in your home garage. Yes, that is what I use at home. So I have a little 12, maybe mine's a 20. But uh, yes, I got the Harbor Freight uh, uh, press at home. I don't have any problems using that at home. It actually works better than the one here at the school. And um, that comes from C.N. Schmidt. 1570. Um, appreciate that, that question. All right. Um, the Dick Ham. One day ago. I've been enjoying your videos and have lately been binge watching. One question I have is I'm curious as to what gear ratio you were running in the rear end. Hey, um, that's, a, that's a really good question. 430 gearing. I'm pretty sure that everybody has to run 430 gearing. Um, the one thing I like about running the 430 gearing, one, that seems to be the optimal amount of power for all of the cars um, with that gear ratio. For most of the tracks that are here on, on the West Coast in California, we don't ever use fifth gear, so 410s are too tall. Um, but it really helps me know whether or not I'm keeping up with pace on everybody else because I watch where they shift. Since we're all using the same size tire, uh, 205, 5015, then and we're all using 430 gear ratio we all shift in about the same place so it helps me identify if i'm on the gate on the gas late or if i'm on the gas early i can kind of judge by where people are shifting and where i'm shifting so it's kind of a gauge i use even when i'm coaching i kind of listen to see where they're shifting or i watch it in the video and that can tell me if they're getting on the gas soon enough or not uh, but that's a great question so 430 gearing is what i try to run and everything when i run 410s in them seems kind of boggy doesn't come out of the hole very fast especially on an mb all right um great question buddy uh let's see if i can scroll down without this screwing up to the next question so um this one is mr to lick it um if it's following spec rules i think that all MBs have to use the OEM LSD and gear ratio. I believe NAs can upgrade now since they are falling apart in competition. Um, yeah, so I know that you can run a Torsen from um, an NB in an NA, and, and matter of fact, almost all of my NAs um, have Torsens in them now. I was once told that. Um, that once you put a torsion in one of those Miatas, that they're almost indestructible. And I'm going to have to use that word almost because my buddy, Dion, Dion Johnson, um, I've seen him burn up and blow up about three or four of them. He seems to be the destructor on torsions. But, yeah, so we could we could change to the newer one. I even have one that has the, the Fuji in it, which is a different style um, LSD. I think that came out in like 2003 or somewhere around in there. And so I even have the one that has that. But um, And then the gear ratio for the five-speed was 430 gearing. 
So we're good. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for that, uh, Mr. Dulicket. All right. We'll try to scroll down and see another one. Nice description. Oh, he's talking about my cam timing video. That, that one gets a lot of views. Um, it would be nice to get the half shafts out of the hub even start this any tips on doing that so i think it would be nice if i could get the half shafts out of the hub to even start this any tips on it? oh so this says yank cut 9424 brother i feel you man i feel you because i just some of them i have i just can't get it out <laughs> all right i mean they get rusted in there it seems like no matter how much penetrant you put in there i've even had them on the press until the hub broke and uh sometimes you just can't get them off i've heated them up until they damn near caught fire and i just can't get them off and so it, it's it's our cross to bear is what i can tell you so you you try i try several methods if i can't get it off i just throw the thing away and i start over i have to throw it away with the axle in it all right and so uh you know i just pitch the whole thing and i start over uh, H&M Auto in Rancho Cordova, California has uh, plenty of those hubs at a fairly reasonable price. The axles aren't that expensive either. I mean, uh, you know, normally I'm using an NB axle, uh, so the axles aren't too expensive, but um, I hear you. And I wish I could, I wish I had an answer that said, yeah, this takes them off easy every way. I've got two or three very robust pullers that I use. And even on it, some of them end up ruining the end of the axle before I ever even get the axle out of the hub. I got four or five of those things sitting in the back room there with hubs with axles stuck on them that we've just never been able to get them off. I'm sorry I don't have a, a direct answer on how to how to get that off. But um, anyhow, I hope that helps and maybe it didn't help. H&M Auto, tell those guys A-plus racing sent you. Maybe he give you a discount. All right, um, so let's see. The next one, Real Damage Boy. Um, but why rebuild hubs? Why rebuild hubs turn so badly? Usually, it turns freely. Um, I think you meant that after I got it done, it was kind of uh, firm, stiff. Um, it is that way until I bolt it in the car. And so, what happens is when you bolt the axle through the hub and you tighten up that outer bolt, it kind of squishes and centers everything together. So it does turn fairly free it's smooth but even on ones that um have already been in the car they don't just spin like a wheel bearing you know it, it it's got some resistance to it there's um there's some resistance in that hub but the axle and the nut hold the whole thing together so sometimes when i have a car that doesn't have a rear end um and i want to have the hubs on there I'll even put just a broken axle end in there and tighten up the nut. That way I can put the wheel on it. Because what will happen if you don't have an axle through there with a nut and you bolt the wheel on the car and you don't have an axle and you lower it down and, and you go to push it, sometimes the whole hub falls apart and then the wheel falls off and the thing comes crashing to the ground. If you put an old junky axle through there that and then tighten it up on the other side, it kind of holds the hub together so that you can push the car around the shop. So. I do that from time to time as well. But great question. Um, and that came from Real Damage Boy. All right. Appreciate that, buddy. All right. Um, Matthew Ballinger. Um, all this is super easy when the engine is sitting on the table at eye level with no interference. This ease disappears when the engine is still in the car. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know what you mean. Um, I did... Film. I filmed one that was um, uh, it was in the car. The very first timing belt one I did was in the car, and then the second one I did, which was the myths and tricks, um, that one I did up on the table. I was kind of a last minute one, and man, that thing is blowing up. I think it's ten thousand views on that video already. Um, but okay, so you are right. It is much easier on the table than in the car. But what I do is, um, is I follow, I put my finger on the tooth that I know that it's supposed to line up in, the one with the mark, and then I follow it back, and then um, I make sure it lines up with that line. So just hold on one second. Mike walked in. Come on, Mike, come here and have a seat. I can't read these people's names. Yeah, 
Mike was busy. We're we're during lunch at school. Come on, sit over here, Mike. I'll sit right here. Uh, Mike doesn't want to be in no, front of the camera. The yeah, that, that's what a mic looks like. So I'm on uh, Matthew Bollinger, I think. Yeah. Uh, Bollinger, yeah. Oh, Bollinger. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Matt, I put my finger on that tooth with the mark, and then I slide my finger back, and I make sure it lines up with the two little Vs that are on the um, – uh, on the timing cover, the inner cover, you know, but yeah, I too try to get down there as low as I can and eyeball it. But if I put my finger on there and I slide it back, it's going to line up on one of those. If it doesn't line up on one of those, then I don't, I don't have a right. Okay. So that's the trick I use when it's in the car. All right. I hope that helps Matt. Okay. So we're going down to Florida. Mr. Tulicket. Mr. Tulicket, Florida. Well, as a native Floridian, I if you ever need to be hosted in Orlando, just let me know. Yeah, that build is super nice. Um, he's talking about the rear hubs. Um, yeah, I go to Orlando at least once a year. I shoot the IDPA state championship there, you know, pistols. And um, so I go there and I did a little fishing the last time. I have another channel called The Angry Cod. And uh, so uh, we can you can see me on there. And I did a little fishing video on fishing right outside of Orlando there by Cape Kennedy. Um, but I appreciate it, man. I'll, I'll look you up uh, when I get to Florida the next time. All right? All right. So I don't know who this guy is. What's this one there, Mike? Chicago, Chicago Music. Okay. 1976. Uh-oh. It's, run, it's running away from me. It's running away. Oh, All right. says, so thanks, Al. With track use and hitting clubs all the time Oops. roughly how many hours can you get out of a fresh rebuild um oh hitting curbs uh a fresh rebuild and he's talking about the hub um you know what um yeah those uh hitting the the curbs and stuff yeah that that's going to make those hubs go bad fast and 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 even if you get hit by another car and what i've seen happen is you get hit by another car on the wheel and it puts a dent in one of the little balls or the race, and then it just starts to tear the whole thing up. But, you know, we get at least two seasons out of, out of the hubs in the rear, and then um, usually we just rebuild the front ones uh, once a year, and then we don't have too much problem with hubs. You know, I've got extras in case we need them, but, uh, you know, they last a couple of years, unless you're banging into a lot of stuff. So uh, you might have to change them more frequently, all right? Um, they're not that hard. 50, 60 bucks for the bearing. Try to use the best bearing money can buy, and they last a lot longer. All right? I hope that helped. All right. Okay, the next one, this guy here. Simply Street Clothing. All right, Simply Street Clothing. So digging the statch combo, those guys build is awesome. Those baller coilovers on it aren't cheap. Oh, I don't know what that means, Mike. Do you know what that is? Uh, I don't know. Those Maybe guys. he likes your facial hair combo you got, stash combo. Oh, the yeah, uh, I don't know. That one's weird. Coilovers and the are coilovers. Cheap. That's the Pinsky from Mazda. So those are thirty five hundred dollars for the set. Yeah, well, yeah, twenty five hundred dollars from Mazda. And yeah, good luck getting them to last longer than a year. Yeah. All right, so let's let's see if we can scroll down here or one or two. All right. Um, great video and easy to follow. What paint did your students use to? Refresh the hub looks great. Um, that's from Joseph, Joseph Gabbett. Gabbett. Okay, so um, actually it was just like uh, some rattle cam paint that we got from, uh, you know, the local parts store uh, in semi-gloss black. So that was it. It was just, I gave a, couple of, gave a couple of girls the hubs and I said, here's the parts. I need you to uh, paint them. Matter of fact, one of the painters just walked in the door. We're getting ready to go to fourth period here. But uh, she painted the hubs and got some of the paint on the hubs, but a lot of the paint on her hands, her clothes, and part of the building. But uh, anyhow, so we're going to have to wrap up here soon because we're coming in the fifth period in about five minutes. But anyhow, Joseph, I hope that, that answered your questions. And, yeah, they did a good job. I want you to be my shop teacher. I'm 30. Travis Nichols. Travis Nichols. Uh, I don't know, Travis. I I think I'm rounding up the last years of my my hobby shop teaching. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting old and tired. Uh, Austin Smith, 1091. What are your thoughts on the 16? Seeing that they're pretty much 
pretty rare in races like the SCCA runoffs, the June spritz. Is there something I should really be putting money in to get faster? Okay. I know what you're thinking. I know how you feel because um, I have seen a big decline in those cars. And, and I tell you, they're, they're selling like hotcakes online though because every kid wants an Anna Miata. But we got a kid in, in NASA in the San Francisco region who kicks ass in a 1.6 car. I don't know the name of the, the kid. I rent cars there and I see him out on the track every now and then. But I got to tell you, that kid is really fast in a 1.6. I don't know who's building that engine. Um, but, and the guys up in Oregon, um, I've raced with them before too. They got some engine builders up in Oregon, man, they're squeezing out tremendous power legally out of a one six car. And so I wouldn't throw away that one six. Now, if you're like in a very athletic shape like me, then a one six might not be your best bet. You might need to go to a one eight, but man, these 13 year old kids that are coming out of karting that weigh like 75 pounds, you can't touch the kid in a 1.6. They're super fast. All right. I hope that answered your question. And that was Austin Smith 1091. All right. Let's see. What do we got? What's the next Same one? Timing tricks. Who's that? A it's Aaron. <laughs> oh, it's a Aaron with a lot of A's and R's. I'm just about to do this job, but I've watched a few YouTube videos. This is by far the best informed video. And that was on, oh, the cam timing. Like I said, that one gets thousands of hits every week. Um, the next one, Carlos Sextera, you mentioned that you have some um, heater core bypasses that you thought it was legal. Heater cores must be, heater cores may be bypassed, but may not be modified to remove. Yeah, that's why I told you. I said, yeah, you know, I see just a little stub sticking out. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying that's my car. I'm not saying it wasn't my car, but I've seen it where people just have the two little copper tubing sitting out of there and it pretends like it's got the heater core and it doesn't. So uh, I have seen that. I cannot confirm or deny that that ever was one of my cars. So uh, yeah, but you are right. The heater core is supposed to be in there. We can bypass it. We don't have to run the heater, but the heater core is supposed to still be there. All right. Uh, last one, Simply Street Clothing. Um, wish we had this class in school. So awesome. And then the next one is from Dick Ham. Uh, you sound like a great instructor. I bet the kids are lined up to take your class. They hate me. They, I'm mean. I'm strict on time. They have to be on time every day. Um, otherwise, it's a tardy even if it's 30 seconds late. They show up late with food. I get to eat it. All right. Hey, I'm going to wrap this video up because they're, they're walking in the door as I speak. And uh, But I'll see you at the racetrack. Bye now.